Hey guys! So if you've done your research and decided that you want to bring a ferret into your home, what color is the best color ferret to own? Personally, we think any color ferret who goes along with a ferret with a great personality is the perfect color. Ferrets come in all sorts of colors and patterns. For one of the best charts going over colors and patterns in ferrets, check out the American Ferret Association's website at ferret.org. Now, I think for a lot of people, when deciding on a ferret, color is a huge part of their decision. We really feel that color should be second to personality. Now, if all of your choices have amazing personalities, then of course, pick which color that you like the best. Now, when deciding on a color for your ferret, the only colors that really can make a difference in actually affecting your ferret are ferrets who are white, have white heads, or really large white markings, especially on their head. These ferrets are much more likely to be deaf or have Wardenburg syndrome, usually called warties for short. Now, just because your ferret is white or has a white head or markings doesn't mean it's for sure going to be deaf or have Wardenburg syndrome. And just because a ferret is deaf doesn't mean they'll have Wardenburg syndrome or vice versa. It is also possible to have non-white ferrets be deaf as well, although much less likely. Otherwise, colors don't really matter. Now, ferrets in these categories can include your albino ferret, who is all white with red eyes, Albinism is a genetic condition where the body produces less melanin, which is what produces pigment in the skin, hair, and eyes. So obviously a lack of melanin causes them to have the red eyes and white fur. Then there are your dark-eyed whites, also known as dews. These ferrets are exactly as they're labeled. They have dark eyes instead of the red eyes, but still have the white fur. Then there are marked whites. So these are ferrets with mostly white fur with just some dark spots or lines or patches here and there. Over time, these patches can actually fade away and they could actually become all white ferrets. Other ferrets in this category of ferrets who can be deaf or have Wardenburg syndrome are those that are blazes or pandas. Now blazes and pandas are not actually coat colors, but rather coat patterns, both of which have more white fur on their heads than a normal ferret would. Now, pandas are ferrets that have an almost all-white head, while blazes have a white line of fur, also known as a blaze, that usually will start on the forehead and go back over the head almost to the shoulders. When we first got Winky, he had a little white mark on just the top of his head, but stopped very short of just behind his ears, so he wouldn't have been considered a blaze. But he would be considered an absolute cutie, aren't you? Yes, you're a cutie patootie. <laughs> Now to talk about ferrets who would be less likely to be deaf or be warties. First you have your typical ferret, your sable colored ferret. Now these coats can vary greatly in shade from being really really dark to a lighter brown color. Our ferret creature was a sable ferret so you can see his very dark brown coat. Then you have chocolate colored ferrets who are even a lighter brown. So Hokey, one of our ferrets we had in the past, was definitely a chocolate. And I do think Mr. Haggard here is also a chocolate colored ferret. Not to be confused with a chocolate covered ferret. <laughs> then you have champagnes, which are even a lighter color. So those are gonna look almost like a tan or a sandy type color. Dobby, our first ferret was this color. So you can see how light colored his coat actually was. Then you have cinnamons. Now true cinnamons are actually very rare, even though a lot of pet stores accidentally label champagnes as cinnamons. True cinnamons are actually a very rich red color. And finally, there is black ferrets. So you can actually have ferrets who are more of a solid black color and not just the really dark brown. Now, besides mentioning the blaze and panda patterns, there are other patterns that the coats that I mentioned can appear in. So you have your pandas and blazes, then you have standards and solids, and then you have your roans and the points, also known as Siamese. Roans are ferrets whose guard coat, so that's the top coat that you can see, are 50 to 60 percent black or gray fur, with the remaining percent being white. And then the undercoat should all be completely white as well. Solids should have guard hairs 100 percent one color on the body, not including on their head. So like our creature was. Standards should have 90 to 100 percent of the same color guard hairs and will seem less concentrated in color than your solids. Now for your point or Siamese, your points, so your shoulders, your hips, legs, and tail are going to be darker in color than the rest of the body, which he is not. So there's many different combinations between the colors and patterns. So you could have a solid sable, a standard sable, a blaze sable, a panda sable, 
a point sable or a roan sable. And again, the combinations are kind of endless. So again, check out the American Ferret Association's website for the complete guide of the different types of coat colors and patterns. So with all these really awesome colors and patterns and coats and ferrets, most people are still gonna have a favorite of like what their ideal ferret's gonna look like. Even for us, when we first decided that we wanted a ferret, I had my heart set on a dark sable colored ferret. To me, they were just so cute with their little bandit masks and they just really looked, I don't know, the most ferrety of the ferrets to me and that's really what I wanted. So after doing research and deciding to get a ferret, that's what I had my heart set on. Now, when looking at ferrets, when we were playing and interacting with a bunch of them, there were quite a few sables there. However, there was this one ferret who was extra inquisitive and surprisingly calm that really just kept drawing our attention. Both me and my husband just felt really drawn to this one particular ferret who happened not to be a sable. There were about 10 different ferrets there that were being sold and probably half of them were sables. So I easily could have had my ideal ferret. Yet this little champagne colored boy, who was indeed improperly labeled as a cinnamon at the pet store, really stole our hearts. And he's the one that ended up coming home with us. After having our champagne colored ferret Dobby for about six months as an alone ferret, we decided we wanted to get him a playmate. And to be honest, we quite frankly just wanted another ferret for ourselves as well. Again, my heart was set on a sable colored ferret and this time a female sable colored ferret because I already had a name picked out. Since Dobby was named after a house elf in the Harry Potter series, I wanted our second ferret to be named after a house elf as well. So I chose the name Winky, named after a female house elf in the Harry Potter books. I had called ahead to the pet store to see if they had a female sable colored ferret and they had exactly one. So I had already decided that I was bringing that ferret home without ever even meeting her. When we got there, we did the same thing as before, and we played and interacted with all of the ferrets that were there. And here is my female sable colored ferret, Winky. Now clearly, this is not a sable colored ferret, nor is he a she, even though the pet store incorrectly labeled him as a girl, not a boy. But if you know anything about ferrets, Winky definitely has a Winky. So although they had my dream colored ferret there and in the right gender, Winky's personality was just so much more compatible. He was again, kind of calm, very inquisitive and just seemed like a perfect match for our family. I mean, how could I turn down this little, little face? I mean, he was just perfect. Now, Winky did not always look like this. So I'm gonna put in some photos of what he actually looked like at the beginning. Winky was a black roan mitt ferret, more commonly known as a silver mitt. So he had that dark colored outer coat of all the really dark gray hairs and a really white undercoat. And just like most of those kind of ferrets do, he roaned out and has lost most of that dark coloring. You can still see some color in here, but he's definitely much more white than he was silver. Fast forward a few months after that and our third ferret kind of just fell in our laps. It's a longer story, but basically a family that didn't want him anymore kind of offered him to us. So after meeting with him and seeing his great personality, he came on board as well and he was a chocolate colored ferret. So again, still no sable, but we loved Hokey dearly. After three ferrets, we were definitely capped out. Hubby was definitely on the no more ferrets thing. Then someone who worked for my husband showed him a Craigslist ad of a dark colored sable ferret desperately needing a new home because they couldn't afford to take care of him anymore. He came home from work and showed me the ad. That was my dream colored ferret right there, sitting right there. I looked at the ferret in the ad and looked at him probably with pleading eyes and he was like, no more ferrets. I'm like, why would you show me this knowing I wanted a sable colored ferret? Like, come on. Needless to say, he ended up coming home with us. We went to visit him. His personality was amazing. So I finally got my sable colored ferret. Although at that point, I probably would have brought home whatever personality was there because I just felt awful for the little dude. So the point of the story is Always choose based off personality and color second. I didn't even get my dream colored ferret until our fourth ferret. So the best colored ferrets are those with the personalities that really match you best. <laughs> and I have to say, we're pretty well matched. <laughs>